Okay. All right, thanks for waiting. Uh, Coach Lubick is here, and after Coach Lubick, we're expecting uh, Wandale and Cade Warner today. So um, if you guys want to start putting questions into the, into the queue, um, I will just open with the um, – okay, I've got some now. Uh, Brian Christofferson, 24-7 Sports. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, uh, Matt, how's it going? Good, Brian. How are you? I'm good. Uh, thanks for doing this. I was wondering, um, how have some of those young guys, uh, what have you seen out of Xavier Betts and some guys like uh, Jamie Nance, Marion Houston, have you, have you seen them showing signs that they could contribute soon, or where are they at? Uh, well, all three of those guys, we've seen improvement. Um, really good attitudes. Uh, you know, Xavier is the newest out of all those guys. He's really, the last two weeks, came on. Um, and, and has a chance to help us, which is – that's a challenge for a freshman. And then the other two guys, just from this – you know, they were both here last year, and they've, they've all taken steps. And the good thing about that position uh, is we have a lot of depth um, and guys that can play for us. Well, one, one quick follow-up. Uh, Oliver, Oliver Martin, is he working with you? Has, has he been engaged? And is, is he not available because uh, of the transfer? What's his situation? I just wanted to clear Yeah, he, he has been working with us. We are still waiting to hear about his eligibility. Uh, we're hoping to hear soon. But uh, he can definitely help us if, if we find out that he's eligible to play this fall. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lincoln Journal star, Parker Gabriel. Go ahead, Parker. Hey, Matt. Uh, hope you're doing well. What, as you get closer to this, the, the, you know, kickoff here, what do you know about this offense sort of, I guess, in a broad sense that maybe you didn't know, you know, six months ago or four months ago? Uh, well, you know, you know, last year I kind of watched him just as a fan, like you guys. So you guys were at the game. I was watching him on TV with a, with a soda and a Coke on the couch. So just getting to know him. And uh, I love the, the personalities of the guys how competitive guys are. Uh, we have a lot of guys that love football. And, you know, especially when, you know, people's mindsets have been tested through this pandemic and are we going to play or are we not going to play? They've really motivated the coaches, our, our players, just because of their work ethic every day. And nothing's really rattled them. So very impressed just who they are as people. How much do you, when you are at this point in the season, whether it's an odd off season like this or a normal one, how much do you learn after the first game or the first couple of games and how much tailoring still is done once you've been on the field in terms of what you think you have and how you want to play? Yeah, uh, good question. I, I think most coaches will say you make your biggest improvements after your first game um, because that's where you, just, you see live stuff against other people. Now, we've been doing as much of that as we can against ourselves, but it's still different when, when you're going against a good opponent. Um, so we expect uh, after we we expect to be ready for our first football game, but you're always going to get improvement after your game. And to do our best to be ready for the first game, we've done a lot of live. We've done a lot of live football, and and we've tried to put them in every situation possible that can come up into a game. In saying that, there, there's still no substitution for actual game reps. Uh, Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Hey Matt, uh, I'm just curious what. What does a, a game day look like for you as an offensive coordinator? Like, are you in the box? What's your routine like kind of leading up to the game? And, and what's your rhythm? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of figuring that out. So we've done a couple of test runs, and I will be in the box. Uh, Coach Frost and I will talk a lot on the headsets together. Um, you know, to, the biggest thing about the game, I think the game gets blown out a little bit out of proportion. It's more the preparation before the game, you know. It's the plan that you have going into the game. The game is pretty much already called. You just got to be prepared for when those situations come up. And so it's a matter of, you know, all of us offensive coaches being on the same play, same page, and, and more importantly, our players being on the same page and feeling comfortable what's going to be called and be prepared for those moments. And then in the game, you know, you've rehearsed it so many times. That's the easy part, to be honest. That's where just it should come natural. Derek Peterson, uh, Hale Varsity. Hey, Matt, um, question about Wando Robinson. As a freshman, he um, really started to take on more of a leadership role in the wide receiver room. Now he's the most experienced player in your room, at least at the Division One level. Like, just can you speak to 
the way he is off the field and, and maybe if he has stepped up more in terms of leadership this season? Yeah, you know, I wasn't here as a freshman, but I was a big fan and watched him make plays. That's, that's hard to come as a true freshman and actually play two different positions, play running back and slot. Uh, from what I've heard, he, he's taken it to a new level. I mean, him and, and Cade Warner are definitely the leaders of the receiver position, and uh, they lead by example. You know, I, I always tell those guys, hey, they're going to respond more to you than they do to me. And so they're, you know, they're the first out in every drill. Uh, they practice hard. When a young guy like Xavier Bet sees Cade Warner go 100 miles an hour or, or, or Juan Dell, that's contagious. And so they've, they've done a great job of that. And that's why they're good players. I mean, they're good players. They, they have talent, but they also have a great work ethic and heart, and they play really hard. When he has the kind of freshman season that, that he has, like, what do you what do you tell him? Okay, these are the next steps for you. Where do you want him to grow in terms of his game on the field? Sure. Well, well the biggest why he's going to keep getting better is he he wants to be better. He, he's his own worst critic. You know, we talk about as coaches, we want guys that want to be great, and so there's always something you can improve on. And so, you know, one thing for him specifically is he, he's going to be a little bit more receiver. He can still play running back, but we played him a little more at receiver. Uh, and so, I, I think just experience. Um, asking him to do a few different things that he maybe didn't do in the past. And then, you know, just being very, very detailed. And that's not just with him, that's with everybody. But, you know, his, his drive and work ethic is, is going to make him, you know, really special. Uh, Athlon Sports, Brandon Kavanaugh. Hey there, Matt. Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody's uh, safe and feeling pretty good on your end. Um, so as good, good. Hey, so uh, finally heading into a game week here before too long. Um, what areas on offense do you feel aren't necessarily where they need to be right this second, but maybe they're just a step or two away from hitting on all cylinders? Sure. You know, to give you kind of a broad answer, you always think you can get better. I mean, right up till Friday of a game time, there's always something you can be a step faster at, uh, maybe a quicker read, a quicker decision. And so it really applies to every position. I, I'm very happy. And I know every coach is going to say this with our progress and how hard our guys have worked. Um, we have a lot of good competition at, at different positions. Guys are playing fast. And part of playing fast is knowing your assignments. And I think they've done a great job of our assistant coaches of ingraining their assignments so guys don't have to think they can just play. Um, but we, like, we're always going to try to take the next step. And so, you know, we just got done with the practice today. We're going to go back and evaluate every single play and see where we can get better. And that's, that's part of just improvement in general. Uh, Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Hey, Matt. Um, who is your starting quarterback? And if you haven't made that decision, when will you? Well, it's an on. There, first of all, we feel great about all our quarterbacks. You know, Luke and Adrian are playing at a very, very high level. And uh, just in the brief mo time that I've been here, I've seen huge improvements. Uh, it's an ongoing evaluation. We evaluate it every single day. They both can win for us. They both are moving the ball. Um, that's going to be a decision between Coach Frost, uh, Mario, and myself. That's going to come up very soon. What's, what's, what's going to be the key, uh, the key thing that you make the decision on? What are the, what are the key diagnostic tools you, you guys will use? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things, but to be the biggest thing is who gives us the best chance to win. They both can win. They both can play. But who gives us the best chance? And the fact that it's a hard decision is a good, is a good situation because, like I said, we got two guys we feel really good about. Does Ohio State, playing Ohio State change that at all, the fact that you're playing the best team in the league in the first game? No, no. I mean – Whoever we play, and you're right, they, they're, they're a darn good football team, but whoever we play, we want to play the guy that gives us the best chance to win. Got uh, time for, looks like three more here for Coach Lubick. Uh, Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Matt. Uh, Coach Frost mentioned last week that uh, Wandale and, and Alante Brown have been uh, dinged up just a bit. Um, what do you guys do at slot receiver when you when you don't have um, them at practice? Who else works at that position? Um, and and I also wanted to ask about Marcus Fleming. Um, when you talked about some of the uh, freshmen and redshirt freshmen at the beginning, um, how is how has he progressed? 
Yeah. Uh, well, to address Wandell and Alante, you know, we expect them both will go. They're, they're practicing. They're going 100 miles an hour. So we feel really good about, you know, their health right now and, and where they're at. Uh, our offense, you know, we, we have a lot of guys that can play those positions. We can have tight ends that can play those positions. We can have running backs that can play those positions that they play. We cross-train all our skill guys, which includes tight ends, running backs, and receivers. So if, if you do have a depth issue, you can move guys in different spots. Um, another guy that's, that's backed up Wandell has done some great things in camp is Brody Belt, uh, Chris Hickman. And, and so we feel we have really good depth there. But, you know, we're, right now we're, we're really healthy, knock on wood. Uh, Marcus, doing, how's, oh, how's Marcus, he doing? I mean. Sure. Uh, freshman from Miami, Florida, has done really well. You know, and, and the more he's in there, the better he gets. He had a really good practice today, and we're excited to see what he can do for us. Two more, uh, Steve Sippel, Lincoln Journal Star. Coach, just to follow up uh, on Xavier Betts. Now, when you, uh, how many receivers would, would you typically have in your rotation? And would you put him in that rotation right now? We have not made that decision. Um, Xavier in the last two weeks has made some big steps. Uh, he's getting reps, you know, with the twos. Uh, we do a lot of reps, so we, we, we're able to rep some of our freshmen and give them shots with the ones. We have ones, twos, and threes, and we kind of intermix them. Uh, it's too early to say. He, he's made some big improvements. I do think he'll help us this year, but as for this week, we, we haven't decided on that. And when it comes to how many guys you're going to play in a rotation, you're going to play as many guys that can help you win. The, the, if we feel confident in a whole bunch of guys that know their assignment and can help us win, we're going to play more guys. If we feel confident in just four guys, we're going to play those four guys. Uh, fortunately, we, we feel confident that we'll have multiple guys that we can kind of move in and out there that can execute and win us football games. Thank you. And we'll finish up uh, for Coach Lubick with Kevin Suits, uh, Channel 1011. Hi, Matt. On Saturday, you guys are going to be one week out from the opening game. How will you spend uh, Saturday? You're going to watch college football, or will you spend it exclusively uh, with your team? What will you do? Well, I'll, I'll definitely watch the Buckeyes, and we've watched them a ton. You know, we're going to keep watching them. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to use Saturday as a preparation day um, where we're kind of getting out the, the last minute, kind of what every type of situation that could possibly come up a game, rehearse it one more time and then rehearse it one more time. And so that's going to be the, the, the bulk of the day Saturday. I think we will, there will be a, one of those nights off, whether it's a Saturday night or Sunday night off, where the coaches can get out and kind of um, catch their breath, uh, decompress a little bit, and spend time with their families. I don't know which night that'll be, but the bulk of that day is going to be getting ready for the first game. All right. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll have players here in a couple minutes, guys.